How has the uh, ethnic background at the Brooklyn Colleges, uh, by that I mean Kingsborough and Brooklyn College, changed since the 1960s? It's changed uh, that uh, originally this, most of the students were of African American, white, uh, Irish, Italian, Jewish, middle class, uh, and they came. They were second generation uh, students. Now most of the students that we're dealing with are immigrants to the United States. Uh, a lot of them from uh, former Soviet Union. A lot of them from uh, uh, Muslim dominated countries throughout the world. A lot of them from. Uh, nations of Africa and Caribbean and uh, a smaller and smaller percentage of those who are and then most of them are first generation to the United States uh, and English is their second language and so on. What percentage of the uh, Kingsborough uh, population is uh, Muslim at this stage? It would be, nobody actually marks down their religion when they come in, so it would, it would be a hard guess. But I would say somewhere, you know, between 30, 35 percent, 40 percent of the student population now might be Muslim at Kingsborough. And what's the uh, attitude towards Israel and uh, supporters of Israel, including uh, Jews in general, as a result of that uh, Muslim immigration influx? Well, the, the students themselves... I, don't concern themselves with politics. It's it's uh, the students are actually there to get move on in their lives, to get jobs, to uh, do well with their lives. It's more the faculty that drives the political discussion at at Kingsborough, and it's the faculty of the left that really is driving the students in terms of their political beliefs, and not the students themselves. The students themselves are there for one reason: they're a commuter school. They come on campus, they want to get they want to get their education, they want to get their degree, and they want to move on in their lives and better their lives for their families, their children, and so on. Uh -huh. um, but are these Muslim professors and instructors who are? No, they're not. In fact, I, I mean, we do have Muslim professors and instructors at, at Kingsborough, but these, these uh, professors we're talking about are not uh, Muslim. They may be Jewish, uh, they may be Christian, they may be other. Uh, so a lot of them are atheists. Um, but they they are uh, of, of uh, a fringe of the far left that believes in a, uh, utilizing these students to uh, bring about social change in the country. And uh, they also have a, a bias and a, a deep, uh, deep loathing of the state of Israel and of Jews. Uh -huh. uh, how do they feel about uh, Americanism and patriotism, capitalism? Uh, well, they're, they're, most of them are not capitalists. Uh, I would say some, some are socialists or what would, and, and some of them call themselves communists openly. Um, and they do not, uh, they are not uh, pro-American at all. Although they, they would claim that they are pro-American, but they just want to see America change. Uh, okay. and to socialism and communism. Correct. Correct. Yes, that's what they believe. And, and they, will do, they will do whatever they can to do that. And they have been doing that, you know, over the, over the past. They've organized at the college to change the college and change the community and change the outlook of the way things are. And, and that... And that, that that's their right, you know. But isn't there a recognized uh, curriculum with City University of New York that they must teach? Uh, there is a recognized, cu recognized curriculum, and they do teach that curriculum, hopefully. Um, and then they add on to the curriculum. And listen, there's a lot of freedom in the classroom. They have academic freedom to teach whatever they want to teach. And they try to in include uh, additional teaching in, you know, forums and speakers and so on, and they try to influence uh, the college and the community through emails, through yeah, through all sorts of different methods to um, to uh, you know change the minds and 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 uh, the thoughts of the students and and the faculty and the staff of the college and the administration of the college too. How effective are the uh, techniques uh, being used by uh, funded NGOs? Uh, advocacy groups uh, in practice. Well, you're talking about in terms of on, on, on campus. On campus. Well, I, I don't think the uh, NGOs and so on are are effect I don't think they're on our campus, frankly. Uh, in terms of influencing the students one way or the other, uh, in terms of the faculty themselves, how effective are they? Well, they, they're highly organized, and it's not all faculty. It's a small group of faculty. Most of the faculty want to teach their classes, want their students to succeed, and including myself. And I believe even you know the the left uh, and far left faculty want their students to succeed. I just think they have another, a different agenda for their students, and, and they admit that. I mean, it's not something that they hide. Uh, they are uh, they're more focused on changing the values and the views 
of the student body at Kingsborough. And I think it's happening at universities across the United States, especially at CUNY uh, these days. They, they are looking for a way to, um, not, I would never say, the, but they are looking for a way to change their minds, indoctrinate them in a, way, in a different way of thinking. They feel that they, they are correct and uh, the way that they've been taught in the past and the way they've been, uh, uh, way students and the way colleges have taught students in the past is incorrect. Do you have a legacy at Kingsborough, a family legacy? Yeah, my, I have a, uh, quite, quite a legacy actually. My father was the uh, president of Kingsborough for uh, 29 years and, and then he, um, he passed away in 1999. I was teaching at, and I, working and teaching at Hunter and uh, I applied to Kingsborough after he passed away. And so I've been at Kingsborough now for 20 years. Um, so uh, we go back almost 50 years at Kingsborough, my family. And my father was actually the man who really built the modern day campus that exists today at the college. It's a beautiful campus, magnificent school. And uh, he really put his heart, his soul, his life into the school. What occurred this week near your office? There's outside my office, there's a large bulletin board where I, I take pride. At the, I, I work in a very uh, dilapidated old building that was supposed to be a uh, a temporary building about 50 years ago and has stood the, te the test of time and now is still standing 50 years later. And there's a bulletin board right outside my office with five five or six photos that I put, uh, put up, black and white photos. And um, one of them was of my father uh, at commencement in robes. And I noticed the other day that it had been vandalized and uh, graffitied on. And the graffiti said, you know, um, F uh, Trump Goldstein, uh, kill the Zionist entity over over the uh, photo, um, and I assume uh, it was a student or perhaps not a student. But I also believe that it was done incited by some of the hateful uh, bullying and comments that are going on at the campus right now. Uh -huh. What happened as a result of that? Well, I I contacted immediately public safety at Kingsborough, and they're very good, the, the people from public safety, and they came, they sent four officers to my office, and they documented it, and they took photos and questioned me. And they asked me to write out a, um, a description of what took place, and they told me that this was not going to be a, uh, a hate crime because it was just a destruction of uh, private property and not considered a hate crime at Kingsborough. Wait a minute. They determined that it would not be. It, it, they said, uh, "Fuck the Zionist entity," which presumably no, kill the Zionist entity. Kill, kill. So what's the fuck the? Uh, fuck Trump Goldstein, meaning uh, you know myself, I think, or my father. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Um, now, what do they know about you? Well, I, I think they've researched me via social media, uh, my Facebook page, some of the posts that I've had, and also in the uh, early two thousands, uh, I, I. I um, left. I was a Democrat. I had supported Obama. I voted for Obama. A lifelong Democrat, actually. Had never voted for Republicans before. And then I had switched my allegiance to uh, the uh, Romney campaign and had done a public uh, commercial for the Republican Jewish Coalition where I had said that I was switching my allegiance and was no longer, it was actually called buyer's remorse. Um, and I decided I was not going to be supporting uh, the Obama campaign uh, and that I was going to be throwing my support towards Romney and uh, that, that made all the you know major newspapers it's all over the internet so they, they have they have a deep hatred for me not only because I'm you know Jewish and because I am pro-Israel and but also because I am you know a Trump supporter and a Republican now and a, a registered Republican no oh. mm -hmm. So this action that took place, they deemed that it's not uh, a hate crime because it took place on private property? No, it, they, it was the destruction of private property. It took place on public property. It's the college's public property. But um, you want to get that? No, no. Uh, but they, they, they deemed it that it was destruction of, um, of, pro of private property because it was my photo. Uh -huh. It belonged to me. Is there a history of uh, the campus police trying to downplay anti-Semitic acts or uh, acts by uh, minorities on the campus? I think, yes, there's been a history throughout the university, not just particularly Kingsborough, where they have tr 
in the past not reported. I mean, I've known there's, there was a professor at Kingsboro that had a uh, Israeli flag um, on her car that was destroyed a number of times. That was never deemed a hate crime. There have been professors at the college that have had incidents with students where they've screamed, you know, kill, kill the Jew, you know, kill the Zionists, whatever. Uh, those have not been reported as hate crimes either. Yes, there's been an incident where they've underplayed the reporting, and that's, you know, par for the course. It was the modus operandi for many years at the college. Uh, and it really is, they, as a director of you know, outreach, they, they didn't want to report it because they didn't want to ha have the bad image of the university, and they didn't want to say that this university was anti-Semitic. I understand that, but it, the time has come for them to confront the issue, and uh, they haven't been confronting it. They've been sweeping it under the rug. Um, what's your perspective as to your safety on that campus? Because it doesn't sound like the campus police really want to protect you because they'll acknowledge, they'll have to acknowledge that, uh, that you know, God forbid, uh, that it might be an anti-Jewish uh, action. Well, the campus police can't keep their eyes on every faculty member at the college. Uh, they do. I know that they've, uh, they've you know, expressed concern to me. They reported it to the NYPD. I've spoken to detectives from the NYPD. Um, but I, 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 my, I am concerned about my safety. I am seriously concerned about my safety, and that's no joke. Um, I've actually, I had a baseball bat in my office that was hanging on the wall that was given to me by a former president at the college, and now I keep it right by my desk. Um, I do worry about uh, the safety of not my, just myself, but other faculty members, other Jewish faculty members at the college. I truly worry because there is this um, this call to, there's an attack, there's, there are the, the the uh, faculty who are anti-Israel and anti-Zionist are in an attack mode against other faculty, especially Jewish faculty at the campus. And, and by attack, do you mean uh, professionally? Professionally, personally, they they deem us uh, occupiers. Uh, they deem us, uh, you know, people who are who should not be at the college. Um, they, they are politically motivated. Uh, that anybody who's who's pro, who, anybody who would vote for listen, I, I I've come out of the closet that I'm coming that I voted for Trump uh, publicly, even though it's on my uh, on my Facebook posts and and in my social media. But they they despise me. They they, they can't believe that anybody actually voted for Trump. Uh, they can't believe that anybody actually supports Israel. Uh, they can't um, they can't believe that anybody is a Zionist. I mean they. they but but, but but you're their academic peer. In fact, you've been there 20 years. Right. I've been there longer than most of them. Uh, right. Yeah. But they that they they actually see that as a negative because they see me as old old school, old fashioned. That that it's time for new ideas, new a uh, new breath of life and. Uh, People like me should be swept aside. Uh -huh. How did your Facebook posts factor into somebody making trouble for you? Uh, because I do post uh, things about radical Islam, and I do post things about uh, you know the NRA, and I do post things about uh, pro-Trump, and I post things about DACA. Uh, and but moderate Muslims post things about radical Islam. What, what's uh, what did they do to, to single you out? What they do with it? Uh, they took it. I think I believe they took it to the administration at the college and asked that I be dismissed. Uh, from the college and uh, saying that I, I should, although I've had uh, over the years and interactions for like 20, 30 years with Muslim students and I have no problem with the Muslim faith. In fact, I actually appreciate the Muslim. I, I, I was talking before. I, I posted a Facebook post that I think the uh, women of Iran uh, should receive the Nobel Peace Prize because uh, of the bravery and not wearing the hijab. Uh, I, I, I am pro-Muslim, I am anti-radical Islam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm totally anti-radical Islam, especially when it comes to uh, indoctrinating young people to hate others. Uh, and that's what and that's what I believe is happening now. Uh, and it's not, you know, just in the mosques and the and it's not just the mullahs that are doing it. It's the left wing faculty on these campuses that are doing it now. Uh -huh. So since you have reported it both to the campus police and the NYPD, what kind of additional protection is being afforded to you? Uh, I, nothing at the moment. Uh, my own, I, I, maybe something surreptitiously, secretly, I, I've not noticed any extra protection. From my, I asked for an alarm from my desk. They said there was no connectivity, even though there's alarms uh, throughout the rest of the college. But I, I am in an old building. I asked for the cameras to be moved, the uh, two cameras that are on the college to be focused on my door. They said they couldn't do that. Um, they do, I'm, listen, I, there's no protection for me. If God, if God forbid somebody wanted to attack me, uh, they could. Uh -huh. Physically. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, yeah, physically. And I really 
pray that no one does because I, I am not I'm not a physical person I do not want to get into a physical altercation with anybody right. is there a, a, a social or professional ostracization which is uh, taking place uh, that, that that always occurs I, I, I think I think yes there is there is there is a grouping of faculty at the college that um, loathe me uh, despise me will will not talk to me will walk by I, I've heard from others they've made unbelievably horrible comments about me um, and uh, they think of me as uh, you know the great Satan and uh, listen it, not just me there are other faculty who are like me but they they are much more quiet <laughs> uh, there are faculty that support Trump at the college there are faculty that are pro-Israel at the college but they're terrified they're terrified to let their friends know they're terrified to let anybody know inside the and the, and and they won't ever let anybody know. Uh, they will not receive promotion. They will not receive tenure. Uh, they are afraid of being ostracized. They are afraid of uh, coming out. Listen, it's it's much worse than anybody understands on college campuses right now. Uh, I tell you right now that in America, the college campuses are the number one place, ground zero, for hate of those who oppo with opposing views. Uh -huh. um well, what does this bode for when these students graduate and go into the adult uh, society? I think most of the students don't want to hear any of this. I mean, most of the students want what's best in life. They want, they want, they want themselves. They want what's best for their families. I think they just want to ignore it and get the hell out. But there are those few that they they entice into this into their hatred and their vile anti-Semitism, and those are the ones that I worry about.